My name is Annie Jesperson and I will be telling you a little bit about some really interesting structural studies we did when I was a visiting master's student in the lab of Dr. Hiro Furukawa at Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory. We were investigating antagonism of NMDA receptors. NMDA receptors are ligand-gated ion channels and belong to the family of ionotropic glutamate receptors and they're involved in neuronal development. They mediate the majority of fast excitatory neurotransmission in mammalian brain. Classical NMDA receptors are heterotetrameric and are built up of two glutamate binding gluon 2 subunits and two glycine binding gluon 1 subunits. They're believed to be built up as a dimer of dimers consisting of one gluon 1 subunit and one gluon 2 subunit. Despite their involvement in both basic brain development and neurological disorders, a mechanistic understanding of antagonism in NMDA receptors has been limited due to a lack of antagonist-bound structures. We were able to obtain a crystal structure of the ligand-binding domains of gluon-1 and gluon-2a in complex with different antagonists. Rather than co-crystallizing the receptor ligand complex, we used an alternative approach which involved soaking of crystals that had been formed in the presence of glutamate and glycine against a buffer containing the same components as the crystallization buffer, but with glutamate exchanged for the antagonists. With this high-resolution crystallography, we were able to identify antagonist binding sites and gain a detailed understanding of their different binding modes and the conformational changes they induce. In DAP5 binding, residues from the upper lobe form polar interactions with the alpha-carboxylate and alpha-amino groups of DAP5, and the amino group is capped through fender Waals interactions with a histidine. The amino acid residues involved in binding to the lower part of the ligand binding domain are similar between the glutamate bound and the DAP5 bound structures. However, the placement of the phosphono group in DAP5 pushes and rearranges the orientation of amino acid residues through direct and water mediated polar interactions. The crystallographic study on PPDA binding gives important insight into stereoselectivity and ligand recognition. First of all, even though the crystals were soaked against a buffer containing a racemic mixture of plus and minus PPDA, the crystal structure shows exclusive binding of minus PPDA. To understand whether minus PPDA is the only inhibitory component in the racemic mixture, the individual enantiomers were synthesized and tested electrophysiologically. The second important lesson learned from the PPDA bound structure was that binding of minus PPDA involves distinct residues in chemistry from that of the DAP5 binding, except for the conserved polar interactions to the amino group moiety. The majority of binding is mediated by hydrophobic interactions involving the phenanthrene ring of minus PPDA and oriented towards the hydrophobic core of gluon 2 a In summary, we've obtained high-resolution crystal structures of the ligand binding domains of gluon 1 and gluon 2 a in complex with different antagonists. We've shown that binding of different antagonists induces different conformational changes and thus causes the ligand binding domain to open to different degrees. Also, the soaking method we described can serve as a crystallographic tool to visualize binding modes of NMDA receptor ligands and thus support structure-based drug design.